This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA here in 2019. And we're getting... Some awesome interviews. No, that's a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of interviews uh, with people in and around independent professional wrestling. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe and see the back catalogs for this and other shows, including the Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Raw Rap and whatever else we decide to podcast here in the wrestling realm here in uh, 2019. Also, uh, please support uh, indie wrestling and uh, including our friends at, uh, well, I'll, I should start mentioning pittsburghwrestling.com if you're in the area. A lot of guys that we talk to on the show are wrestling in those promotions. And if you're uh, within an hour of uh, Pittsburgh, uh, PA, there's a lot of shows. There's like a show almost every weekend. Sometimes you have a choice. Sometimes I have to film multiple shows. That's get real difficult. There's a lot of wrestling here, and it's really awesome and sometimes scary. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, go check out that at PittsburghWrestling.com and over at IndieWrestling.us where you can find a lot of guys that we talk with, including tonight's guest uh, represented over there on VOD and over on the Indie Wrestling Network on several shows. So with us, he is... Now, he's not a stranger to the studio because we've had him here, I think, in the very first Bohemoth Invitational. And then I think they were afraid to invite him back after he thwomped everybody uh, with his. And there was just yelling about like abs and Thanksgiving and, and, and everything. And, and finally, he's been brought back. We're easing him back in. And maybe we'll play some video games with him soon. The absolute Thomas Mathis is with us here in the studio. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No problem. So, <laughs> uh, Thomas, you're somebody that I, I think I've, I've been uh, seeing in action for well over a year now. So I, I can't wait to have a conversation with you here and, uh, and see where we go with this. Thank you. Um, well, the first question I usually put out there for everybody that maybe haven't heard of you, um, a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, so what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Oh, okay. So my earliest memory of professional wrestling. So I grew up with, uh, he, he was, I would call him a brother. His, uh, we grew up on the same street and he had, a love of wrestling and he had a whole bunch of action figures and um, we would play together uh, on my front porch and he would always tell me about wrestling 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 and this was back like when the rock was was like in his prime and stuff and uh kane had his mask and uh it was like you know like stone cold and, and all that stuff i think x Pac was around it was around that era and uh that's kind of how i learned about what it was um and but i never like acted like went out and watched it still for some reason i don't remember i was really obsessed with dragon ball z <laughs> and like pokemon <laughs> and what else was i really into when i was a kid i don't even remember so you're kind of on that japanese line of things i was <clears throat> but i did fall in love with wrestling um i actually i was with my dad uh, at the convention center, and I don't know how old I was, um, but I was really small, and I remember meeting, I actually met uh, Kurt Angle, um, and uh, I remember looking up at him, and I was really tiny back then, uh, you know, I don't remember how old I was, and I didn't know who he was, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I didn't watch wrestling yet, and my dad was like, Hey Dave, uh, hey yeah, hey, hey David, who's that? And I was like, oh, I, that's uh, because uh, I knew he was a professional wrestler because I had his action figure, uh, and um, we like walked up to him and um, <laughs> I want, I want, wait, 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 I want to pull back for a second. I want to pull back. You recognized him from his action figure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we walked up to him, <laughs> and my dad was like, oh yeah, we're huge fans, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he was like, well, wh what was your name again? <laughs> and Kurt Angle was like, I, I, it seemed like he was like, hmm, like, oh, I'm Kurt Angle, but it probably wasn't. Um, <laughs> um, and it was like a little embarrassing 
but then that was when I like uh, got into it. Like that's, I was like, okay, I'm going to check this out. And I really fell in love with it then. So I remember it was like around when, um, I was really into it when Randy Orton was, uh, the legend killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hated him so much. (laughs) 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 He's really cool. He kept taking out all my uh, favorites. Mm. Yeah. So how did you go from that to like, at what point during this were you, did you go come around to, I want to get into the ring? Um, so getting into the ring was never anything that I had intended, uh, or expected. Uh, it was a, it, it wasn't a spontaneous decision. It was something I sat on for probably about two or three months. Um, but I really just kind of wanted to get out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had been bodybuilding really seriously, uh, you know, training, um, my body in like all aspects of fitness, uh, for a long time. Like, I think it was like seven years or something. Um, and I wanted to use it, uh, while I could. And since football was kind of out of the question still, and, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't really sure where else I could go. Uh, I got the idea of professional wrestling and, um, I thought maybe I'd, you know, could give it a try and I had no idea, um, you know, like what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had no idea, um, just how dramatically it would change my life, how big of a role it would become. So you were mostly in the fitness side of things. You, You didn't really get into sports in high school or anything. I played sports. I, uh, played football. Mm hmm. Um, Otherwise, I was kind of, I was, uh, I, I, I didn't stick around school too much. <laughs> I, I went to Carrick High School and mm. like there wasn't really anybody there stopping me from just kind of walking out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I wasn't exactly a good student. <laughs> okay. If, uh, if that makes sense. So you were talking about that you were kind of figuring out that next step since school wasn't playing out and you yeah. couldn't really do football. So like, what do you do with this? my uh you mean like my body the fitness thing yeah yeah i definitely wanted to use it um and it ended up being professional wrestling Mm -hmm. so how did you discover like the training aspect of it um google search (laughs) so hey it works yeah it was google search (laughs) and pwx popped up and i emailed uh mr jim miller and Mm -hmm. um and we just kind of went from there (laughs) i tried out on uh the same day as timothy titan yeah, we had the same day tryout. Somebody, we're also trying to get in here for the video game days. <laughs> so I understand he has a hell of a Twitch channel. Yeah, uh, apparently. <laughs> so, like, you talked about like kind of not knowing what to get into. Like, what mostly surprised you when it got in there? Even just that first day, just trying out. Um, it was. So you mean like my experience in training? Yeah. So, um, it was frustrating um because i was so um impatient Mm -hmm. yeah i was a different person when i tried out uh for sure i was uh way 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 more immature um and i was really impatient and um so i see it in like new trainees even now like they get frustrated they want it now you know they they want it to go fast 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 but you know it really is something that you want to, uh, like take baby steps towards, you Mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of very complicated, uh, like concepts that, um, I think are important to grasp, you know, in in order to like understand how to, how to go through with the training Mm -hmm. and like get a lot out of it, I guess. But I don't know. What do I know? (laughs) (laughs) So you you roll through training. Um, um, did did it take you longer to get kind of a handle on things then? Um, for me personally, yeah. What the, what those issues? Um, I think when I debuted, I wasn't quite ready, Mm -hmm. um, for sure, especially not to, uh, yeah, definitely not. Um, but I would, I mean, I I guess I would slowly learn, you know, and I still am, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a journey. I, I learn stuff every day and, and I love it. I love to, to study wrestling. I really do. It's a, I really love to, um, to watch, uh, the performers, um, 
like implement the techniques that I've learned in training from like Brandon Kay and, and Chris LaRusso, uh, uh, Chris Hamrick taught me a, a lot at this recent sem- seminar, something that was really like new and expansive and, uh, Cato taught me a lot and Crusher Hansen, Quinn Magnum, of course, it's been a really great positive influence in my life. Um, yeah, I love to study wrestling. <laughs> so I'm like rambling on. I apologize. No, that's that's fine. Uh, just to, just to kind of track back. We're now recording this at the beginning of January 2019. What, what was your first match? Um, I it was August 26, uh, 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah, against Justin Idol, who is wonderful to to work with. He is fantastic. That's awesome, and I think a former trainer himself too. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, he came to, I was at, uh, it was still PWX at the time I was training and he came uh, as a special day to, to give us some of his knowledge. And uh, I, I liked him like immediately. Mm-hmm. He's a really cool guy. I, I love Justin Idol. Awesome. Let's talk about uh, the absolute. Okay. <laughs> Cause I, I, I didn't realize how some of the aspects of, you're, what you're going for with your character. Uh-huh. I had a conversation with you recently. That surprised me. So, so tell me, who is absolute Thomas Mathis when he's, go, when he's out there? In the okay, ring? so Thomas Mathis is pretty much a douchebag who is obsessed with eating vegetables. Uh, he is, you know, totally hardcore into fitness, and he believes that his body is what makes him the greatest. <laughs> and uh, I have come to fight society specifically to dominate in singles. And, you know, I'm there to, to take from them. And that's my goal. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and taking masks and yeah, doing, exactly. doing crude things with luchador masks. Tour and flight. <laughs> Man, he was fast and he was small. <laughs> he was tough, but I think I took something that was really important to him. Mm-hmm. So we have some interesting gifts that have been floating around of uh, of you rubbing on, on your butt. You, you, you tried it on at the beginning of the, of the match last month. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you trying out your, your maybe maybe having a luchador persona in the future? <laughs> well, when I put that mask on, it's kind of if you know I found it to be very useful for eliminating nose hairs because the stench <laughs> is so bad it just like pss, burns and they're gone wash i your don't mask, have any guys. pesky nose hairs anymore <laughs> wash your mask yeah, yeah we've had luchador mask uh floating around the studio i was like mm, we never we should have washed that <laughs> probably so um <laughs> i i have to mention this because we were talking about specifically your gloves because i was always like like I was like, he comes out, he does the posing, and he's got these, he wrestles with these white gloves. <laughs> and it's weird and kind of creepy to me. But I didn't realize where the gloves came from until I had a conversation with you recently. Mm-hmm. But can you tell us a little bit about that inspiration? It kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. Um, okay, yeah. So, I, in case, uh, yeah, I was a big fan of uh, like Dragon Ball Z growing up. And um, Vegeta was uh, like a character, and a lot of characters wore white gloves and so i was actually given um this gimmick uh like the absolute Mm -hmm. um by it was quinn magnum and uh drake braddock was in on it who actually named me and uh i agreed to take the the gimmick and oh by the way drake braddock the first time i saw him he was known as the bullet catcher Oh, really? <laughs> so, as far as gimmicks go, <laughs> like, I think you can only do that once, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I agreed to take the gimmick, and um, it was, uh, it, man, I uh, had a real hard time with the gimmick. Uh, that was one of the biggest obstacles in my uh, trials of, of training, especially early on. Uh, I had no idea how to be, um, like, cocky and... Mm-hmm like arrogant and obnoxious and, you know, uh, loud. I, I really, cause I'm a really introverted person. Uh, actually, um, you know, I'm not a big like party guy or anything like that. I, I never really was. Um, I have a lot of weird hobbies and I'm definitely introverted. 
<laughs> but I'm a gym rat. Um, the uh, yeah, so the gimmick uh, it was Vegeta who actually um, like I realized that oh I could just act like kind of like Vegeta and mm. pick up some of his things, and that helped me get started with it. Uh, obviously, I have a long way to go. For those that maybe aren't into the Dragon Ball Z, I, <laughs> I, I know it, and I and I've told this story to to my nephew, my brother, and they they're completely into the idea. Uh, what is Vegeta's persona on that show? <laughs> um, he is very prideful. Um, he's really regal too, uh, mm-hmm. and he believes that he's like the strongest, and he wants to be. Um, but he's like stuck. Uh, behind Goku. And so he is uh, a character that has had a lot of like development, which is something I enjoy mm-hmm. uh, and w- would hope to uh, also have in, in my gimmick. Like I would love to continue like to evolve and expand and grow my um, new character's persona. That'd be cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And it all starts with the gloves. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, made a change to them um they're gonna be white weightlifting gloves now instead of show gloves Mm -hmm. so it's a little change um hopefully they still stand out real real like loudly you know because that's like was another reason why i chose them is because uh you know i had uh brandon he would always tell us uh you want to stand out like you want to be different Mm -hmm. quinn magnum too uh has said similar things so the white gloves were like a great way for me to kind of like oh look at those those are weird even if i could just make their eyes stop for a second if i'm like on a poster or something like that that's good you know mm-hmm. doing something that not everybody else is doing with their 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 mean wrestler pose right <laughs> <laughs> awesome so what are you um watching these days what are you kind of drawing inspiration from uh, in the wrestling world mm-hmm. um so I am, I would call myself more of a uh, student of wrestling than um, like a a true, like true hardcore, like fan fan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Because since learning how to, uh, like since becoming a professional wrestler, um, I've looked at it very differently and I um, get a different kind of joy from watching it now. Mm-hmm. than I used to as a, as a, like a child. I, uh, now it's, I, I watch it to study and there are certain wrestlers that I'll go to, to study, um, rather than like SmackDown or a raw or something like that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I like to study, uh, I, I, I've learned a lot from watching, uh, gold dust, um, Booker T is someone I, he was probably my favorite growing up. Uh, I've, I've taken some things from, uh, so what, kid. what era of Booker T I'm interested in? I think <laughs> I know which one. Yeah. I really thought him and Goldust were really comical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they, they brought a lot of laughter to my, are we going to get a King Booker living. pinky at some point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that game. I got, uh, I didn't know what to think of it. I, I love the old Booker T so much. Mm-hmm. I was like kind of sad when he became King Booker, but I hated him a lot. So, you know, they got the job. <laughs> That's like probably the only time I didn't like Booker T was when he was King Booker. Mm-hmm. So I guess they really kind of nailed that on the head. <laughs> Just like Bradshaw. Remember when he was with the APA? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he became JBL. I was like, what did they do? And I hated him so much, but now like I look back and, uh, JBL was like such a great heel. I remember, uh, how much I hated him. <laughs> some, some good errors. I, I don't think people give enough credit. Yeah. In, in like it, you know, that mid 2000s smackdown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he had those big horns on his hood. <laughs> that was so stupid. I hated him. <laughs> All right. Well, you've been at it for about a year and a half, if I have my math right, uh, in, in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. What's the uh, best and the worst thing about indie wrestling so far? For hmm. you? Um, should I start with the best or the, the worst? Whatever whatever comes easier. Okay. Um, let's start with the best. Um, 
the best part about wrestling and being a part of professional wrestling is um, having the opportunity uh, truly to perform and the responsibility to perform in front of a live audience and um, entertain them. Uh, that is such an honor to me and a privilege. And I'm so lucky and fortunate and blessed to get to do this and, and get to have these experiences um, with, with all of you guys. It's, it's really been something, it's been a crazy ride and I'm really lucky to be here and it's awesome. And it's a great feeling uh, at the end of the day, every day. Um, and that never changes. So I think the joy that it's brought me, um, especially uh, as far as like confidence goes and, uh, you know, um, self-worth, uh, these things have improved thanks to wrestling. So it's been a really healthy thing in my life. So awesome. that's the best part of it. <laughs> Plus, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst? Uh, the worst. Um, what's the worst? Uh, so there's, I worry, I would hate to be injured. That would be, uh, that would be devastating if I were to break my neck or like, if I were to break my, my back or like, uh, if it, everything else is like, yeah, but if I screw up my spine, uh, that's going to be. That's the problem. And then, like, if I screwed up my my head or my my brain, um, that would also be an extremely uh, devastating injury that I would wish on nobody. Uh, and that is my worst nightmare. And it's probably the worst thing about it. But, um, you know, because of that, I have to take professional wrestling really seriously. Um, and I make sure to absorb as much knowledge and information from my coaches as possible because I, I just cannot have that happen. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, um, you know, the, I don't, don't have the best medical coverage and all these things. So who does these days? <laughs> exactly. Uh, it would be unfortunate, but awesome. thankfully there are a lot of really great workers out there and I don't have to worry about that mm -hmm. as much, you know? Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, where can people, uh, catch you these days? Um, you know, uh, what promotions are you generally popping up in? Um, so you can, you can come to see me at fight society. Um, as far as, um, expanding out right now, I'm not sure exactly where to go. Um, next. Uh, so honestly, I've kind of just been taking it one day at a time. Um, I'm there to help Quinn. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there to, uh, you know, do my job to the best of my ability and I'm just going to take it slow. Um, you know, one thing at a time, there's no rush. Uh, you know, um, there's always, you know, I got a long career ahead of me, so just kind of take it slow. I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Uh, just kind of biding my time a little bit and, you know, listening and, and, uh, you know, playing my role and being very happy too. <laughs> awesome. And where can they find you online? Um, so you can find me online, uh, at it's facebook.com slash absolute Thomas Mathis. And then the, uh, Instagram is Thomas Mathis. Absolute. They're flipped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. And of course, you can see uh, Mathis in action um, over on the Indie Wrestling YouTube and Facebook. We have a few clips on there if you do a search for his name. And of course, full matches from Fight Society, RWA as well, including incident we were talking about before the show with Mustard and Marshall Gambino. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Gambino. <laughs> Those tights were sacrificed to yes, the high stakes title. The high stakes titles <laughs> legend. Uh, so, um, but uh, you can, hey, well, hey, well, you haven't gotten to IWC, you, you fought for an IWC title at one point. So yeah. add that add that to the list. That's a, <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> Go check that out on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, VODs of Fight Society are popping up over there for the last couple of months and uh, of course the longer 
um, back catalog that is over at the Pro Wrestling Network if you want to go check out some more Fight Society and all future stuff's going to be on IndieWrestling.us as well. So uh, go check that out. Thank you so much my guest, Thomas Mathis. And uh, thank you everybody that's dropped in the live chat rooms. Again, keep an eye on Indie Wrestling US and Wrestling Mayhem Show's Facebook page for events on future interviews. Uh, we do like to get them when we can, and you never know when they're going to pop up here. And uh, sometimes we don't know when they're going to pop up, and you'll get a surprise stream here and there, too. So uh, thank you, Amber, James, Deb, and everybody else that's popped in through the evening there. Until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.